Modibo is 18. She is one of the few girls remaining in her village to set for marriage. She was desperate to complete her education, but for the past three weeks, she has not been able to go to school. All vehicles plying the route had simply refused to visit her school, some kilometers away from Yola. The teachers had stayed at home. Ahead of her was the West African School Certificate, WIAC, conducted in 16 African states. She has to compete with her peers. In her school, most students stayed away too. It now appears that she may not actually finish high school after all. Even if she manages to finish, she is unlikely to compete favorably in WIAC. Staying at home for weeks every season has become her lot and the lot of many of her schoolmates in the local government area. With fallen hope, she sat on the edge of a wooden tree overlooking a discredited shanty. Her school, during the rain and season, a secondary school, is always difficult to access in a Damar state. After years of hues and cries, the Nigerian authorities, through funds being expected from stolen assets, had planned to rebuild the roads out of the $458 million being funds recovered from erstwhile military dictator, late General Sani Abaja, stashed in Switzerland. But it has been two years running without a recipe. Even though several times she had listened on the radio, listing the road as one of the already completed by the authorities. Modibo's plight is just one of the experiences of Nigerians who had been subjected to agony due to several abandoned and uncompleted projects meant to provide the essentials of life. The pain cuts across the country. Education is one of the major targets of the Nigerian government. Since 2004, Africa's largest democracy has increased the campaign to meet the expectations of the Millennium Development Goals, MDG, as spelled out by the United Nations. However, these efforts have been undermined by corruption and ineptitude and lack of effective utilization of the $505.5 million. The funds recovered were through the rare show of courage by the government of Switzerland with the collaboration of Swiss coalition and Nigerian NGOs. Though the government launched a massive campaign towards retrieving funds stolen earlier by the military dictators that ruled and ruined the country for close to two decades, little has been achieved. Much of the stolen funds and assets are lodged in Europe and America. In 2004, the government undertook the financing of specific projects in line with the MDGs. The 2004 budget also focused on financing of specific investment projects in core MDG sectors, including education, health and basic infrastructure, power, roads and water. The federal government of Nigeria's agenda for reform in alignment with the NDGs as enumerated by its Poverty Reduction Strategy paper comprised four goals – wealth creation, employment generation, poverty reduction and value reorientation. These goals were to be put in practice by the FGN's National Economic Empowerment Development Strategy Needs Programme. This is to support the MDGs, 
The key aspect being the elimination of poverty, education, health, environmental sustainability, rural development, among many others. The World Bank had also initiated the Nigerian Public Expenditure Management and Financial Accountability Review aimed at ensuring reforms at the government spending and budget execution culture. This PEMFAR was to be deployed by World Bank for the monitoring of utilization of this recovered looted fund to prevent corruption from undermining the intendment of the projects. A report was issued in December 2006 by the World Bank under the title Utilization of Repatriated Abacha Loot, Result of the Field Monitoring Exercise. Report prepared by the World Bank with cooperation from the Federal Ministry of Finance. Our team conducted on-the-spot assessment of these projects that dot the six geopolitical zones of Nigeria. This assessment was informed by the independent shadow report prepared by ANIG under the platform of Nigerian Network on Stolen Assets, which indicted the World Bank of connivance and conspiracy in its report on the execution of the projects and World Bank's inability to grant FOI request of syrup for details of the bank's monitoring exercise on the utilization of the looted funds. The method involved on-the-spot visit to the sites and inspection of the facilities, talking to contractors and locals. In some instances, confidential information were obtained from inside government sources on the project execution strategy. According to the NNSA Shadow Report, this report hopes to reveal some specifics on inspected projects that were eluded by the World Bank's PEMFA draft report. Our further review of the Shadow Report exposes more Gary insight into the relooting of the repatriated looted fund. The NNSA Shadow Report said further, just as the ultimate emphasis of the application of the repatriated Abacha loot should be its meaning for development and poverty eradication, so should reporting on the PEMFA make the implementation of these goals visible rather than obscured by statistics. The World Bank draft report field trip results by sector gives exhaustive detail on the statistical results of the questionnaires with the result that visualization of the projects in question becomes mad in slavish adherence to methodology. The report is, in other words, not very readable and fails to give insight into the challenges faced in the completion of individual projects. While this NNSA shadow report has chosen not to capture each and every detail contained in the PEMFA monitoring exercise questionnaires, it has sought instead to give a clearer picture of development efforts on the ground, a clear indictment on the involvement and report of World Bank. Across the country, the story of neglect and frustration of end users is similar or the same. We take you to the South-South region. The Federal Science Technical College, Ahuada, in Ahuada East Local Government in Rivers, is only 25% complete. The renovation of Kubo Primary School in Ahuada leaves behind 20% completion deficit. In the oil-rich Niger Delta, the tales of war are just too evident. In the Southeast, the anguish stares us in the face. The federal government college, Okigwe Imo State, which involved one hostel and renovation of classrooms, did not even commence. The building remains desolate, descript, and unkempt. Since our team could not gain access into the school compound to monitor the project, it was however noteworthy that a quick look of the school premises from the security post where we were allowed for inquiry's sake shows that the school carries renovated look with its external painting. We also noticed a school building that looks like an administrative block with AC installation. This suggests to us that these works of renovation were recently done. We could not, however, independently ascertain if this was done with the repatriated funds or by super project funds. The project worth 26,589,100 is thus like a water gone down the drain pipe. 
at Newi. The Utah Central Primary School was 4,517,284.81 Naira, which began in 2002, was only 50% done. A distraught official says the contractor came in 2004 and deposited some sand and books and left. On this, our assessment visit in January 2017, some of the blocks were recently painted superb signage while others remained abandoned and overgrown by weeds. The Southwest tells the same bitter stories. At St. David's School, Kudeti, the renovation of school's VIP toilet was 4,416,900 at 0.90 Naira, located in Africa's third biggest city, Ibado, began in 2002 but as at the time of monitoring abandoned at 30 percent completed students and staff of the school engage in open defecation at the risk of epidemic breakout also in the southwest some roads inspected were abandoned the ishara agoiwoye ijebuigbo ife section one road agoiwoye all in the Jabu north local government area ogun state was incomplete and further degraded till date since 2002 when the project was initiated. Sadly, the contractors of these projects were behind schedule with only 55% of the job completed, having received 1.27 billion Naira out of the total 2 billion 353 million 905,010 Naira in 2006. At the time of our physical assessment in January 2017, the contractor never returned to site and the road is practically impassable. The situation is the same in the northwest area where the renovation and furnishing of Federal Girls College in Sokoto is only between 40 to 80 percent complete. In Gwandu, Kebi State, a Federal Government Girls College with classrooms, library and fencing is only 60 percent complete. It costs 39,646,542.46 naira. The agony is not restricted to the education sector alone. Health, roads, electrification projects leave a legacy of woe. Where is the toilet? See our mattress. 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 Wow. In some instance, the projects could simply not be located. For instance, the Primary Health Centre project at Arroyo Cross Rivers was constructed in the air. Our team could not find it. In reality, the local government only exists in the figment of those who fixed the project. It needs no soothsayer to know that the money has gone into the pouch of mischief. A government fixing projects and local governments that do not exist. In spite of this, the authorities still allocated 17,108,009.40 naira to the fictitious project. Sadly, this was not reflected in the World Bank report on the utilization of fund and project executions. The electrification of Guara and Eporo towns in the oil-rich LMA local government is only in half measure. Where there is lights in Eleme, the electrification of Eporo could not be located. The projects called 23,172,762.18 Naira. Roads suffer the same fate. On getting to the town of Etio in Eleme, our team could not locate any village by the name Eporo. The village with similar name was Gudu Boro. In the southeast geopolitical zone, the story remains the same. The rehabilitation of Ekolobia, Oko, Umanze, and Mbinta 
the border road of Imo State and Anambra East Local Government Area, Anambra State, commenced in 2002, though estimated to be 65% completed, with the cost of the project set to be 2,519,674,736.22 Naira, but its completion remains a tall dream. Officials at the site admit that work has been stalled. It is a single carriage road. This road looks fairly motorable. However, there are bad portions of the road. Our findings suggest that large part of the road was recently fixed by the Anambra State Government as part of their road network project. The Northeast Geopolitical Zone is not an exception. Since 2002, when the construction of the Mubi Maiha Sorau Road from Mubi Bukala Maiha Sorau in Mubi Maiha Sorau local government area in Adamawa State was initiated, till date it remains less than 26% completed. Despite the contract sum of 7.067 billion naira accrued to the project, this road is an international road connecting Nigeria and Cameroon. We are suffering here. Accidents occur almost on a weekly basis. The roads are bad. People are dying, including women and children. The rehabilitation of Yola Maraba Mubi Michika Road, Yola Mubi Kudzum Song Hong Mubi Local Government Area at Damawa State was commenced in 2002. But contrary to reports of 99% completed in 2005 by the Shadow Report, the road seemed abandoned 30% rehabilitation of the 170km road. The project was responding to community complaints about poor condition of the road. The project cost was 6.868 billion naira. But between 1999 and 2003, mm. They say the contract was awarded for the rehabilitation of that road. Mm. They started from Yola. Mm. Unfortunately, it stopped at home. Mm. And up to this moment, it has not reached movie. And even the one from Yola to home, mm. uh, as you've seen it, mm. between Song mm. and Gombi, mm. is still very bad. Mubi is a gateway to other African countries like Cameroon, country. mm. Central Africa, and even Congo. So you see, that road is very, very important. The road is no good. Okay. If you pass home before you, you reach Mararaba, mm. all the road is bad. Wow. From Mararaba movie mm. to movie, mm. the road is no good. Totally is no good. From movie to my high is 25 kilometers. Uh -huh. So the road is bad. Wow. Totally bad. It's no good. People are suffering in the road. For the past 15 years, the kid, uh, the kid contractor, the, ah. the company is the kid. The kid? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the repair road, but the road is no good. Okay. okay. It's no good. That was 15 years ago. Yeah. These are about the only impact of government in the lives of residents of these communities, but it was never achieved due to corruption. This entire stretch of area was invaded and captured by Boko Haram. Furthermore, the construction of six new bridges along Argungu Bui Road and the completion of the Sokoto River Bridge Argungu in Argungu local government area Kebi State, designed to link the internationally recognized tourist hub, the Argungu Festival Fishing Village, with Kebi and Sokoto remains an illusion. Despite the expenditure thus far invested, totaling three billion seven hundred and thirty-five million and fifty thousand two hundred and forty-one naira, the road was slated to stretch one thirty-six kilometers, but sadly, only fifteen percent has been completed till date, with its susceptibility to deterioration during the rainy season. Our team heard that contracts awarded are sometimes backed with 10% payment of graft to government officials. It is noteworthy that not all the projects listed by the federal government were made available by state officials, feeling suspicion that many more projects may have been listed in fictitious areas and funds allocated to them. 
It is not clear that recovery of stolen funds is just one step forward, but does not in any way resolve the contradictions associated with stolen funds. Of critical importance is the involvement of the beneficiaries and local communities in terms of needs assessment before the projects are conceived and implanted, and also the involvement of the people in the project implementation phases. The involvement of World Bank in the utilization of this particular fund further legitimized the corruption agenda of government officials and officers directly connected with the implementation than mitigated. As acknowledged in the PEMFA Shaga report, the most striking finding of the field monitoring exercise was the large number of incomplete projects, in many cases projects never even started. Of importance is how the funds were utilized, the application of the funds to meeting the good of the highest number. It does appear that stolen funds again end up in the questionable red light district.